so we're live um hi everybody welcome to another winter tying session with mascari fly um we're here for the next couple of hours we're going to do a few flies for you tonight um <clears throat> and uh cover some tricks and tips some nice patterns and um see <clears throat> see how the evening goes I uh, posted a picture earlier on of a uh, mayfly wolf that I'm going to be doing a little bit later on also tonight we're going to announce the winner of our draw that we had on Tuesday the lucky winner is going to win this nice selection pack of zonkers and our dubbin and <clears throat> bit of fun, bit of a chat so if you're online and you're if you're online and you're up to nothing tonight well then by all means stop by say hello uh how you doing tony regan good to see you hope you're keeping well and uh, if you've got any questions or anything you want to comment on by all means please or anything you want to see uh shoot me across a message and um we, we'll try and cover as much as we can in the next hour or two uh robbie berry hi how are you going um okay so <clears throat> hope everyone's enjoying the october bank holiday weekend for what it is ireland had a decent enough win today uh, great to see it and uh, roll on next saturday night uh, against france that's at eight o'clock i think so um live flight time next saturday night could be a bit, bit later uh, how you doing deirdre hope you're keeping well paul paul works online there martin fantasy how, how are you keeping um so um hey jean luca hey michael um hope everyone's keeping well and enjoying their saturday night so let's get stuck into some flies here uh we're going to start off with a, a little dry fly um was asked a lot of questions during the week following last week's show and um we're going to cover four more patterns tonight based on some of the stuff that people asked last week and there were some people asking about kind of variants to gnats and stuff like that and i do have a little variance there um that's based on, on a fly an italian fly called the brutus i'm not sure how many people out there are aware of it um fantastic dry fly um this is one jerry Mo jerry morgan how are you going brian canty good to see you liam how are you keeping pat kennedy's on there as well from kenny how are you pat hope you're keeping well um so <clears throat> this is this is a little dry fly that has i've been using for the last 10 15 years um and has always managed to, to pull up a couple of fish so um we're gonna we're gonna give that one a start off very simple like the way most dry flies i think should be um and uh really really effective so in the voice there i have a do4 marutu size 18 barbless hook and i'm just going to start off by as usual attaching our tying thread so a bit of kevlar our own kevlar there and uh graham long again how are you going graham dave vegan's on there bernie ryan my sister good girl bernie you're going to get into a bit of fly time maybe uh maybe unfortunately bernie had to shut down due to our covid restrictions uh, she has a salon up there in Court Town in County Wexford. And um, while I agree with a lot of the restrictions that have been put in place and I abide by them, I think some of them just have no rational sense to. Um, but anyway, Bernie, you've got a bit of spare time in your hand. Get onto Piscari Fly there, buy yourself a fly time. Keep enjoying us here every Saturday night. Could be your new love, you never know, B. So, uh, but anyway, good to see you. Hope you're keeping well and the boys and all are keeping well. Um, for a tail for this one, I'm going to use a bit of micro glint. Okay, this is pearl micro glint. Really great stuff for small tails, for little dries. Uh, hi, Ben. Ben, how are you keeping? Um, really good for small for, for tails, for small little dries. I use it quite a lot. But also for nymphs. Um, really good for tails. Not only for tying microglin perdigons, but, but for tails and stuff, it can be really effective as well. So I'm going to take a little pinch of that. I'm just going to put in a single strand tail there. Tied it in. Don't cut it off just yet till we actually get the fly tied and we'll see uh the exact required length we want just tidying up a little bit of waste there hope everyone can see me okay hope everyone um hope hi dermot uh hope the sound and all is good 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 to start with tonight. i know last week we had a few uh technical issues and um, but we got it sorted and um hope everyone's going perfect for tonight so we're going to put in our hackle it's basically just a body hackle and what i've got is i've got some grizzle okay grizzle, grizzle saddle quite fine um jean lucas is his favorite stuff for nymphs yeah jean lucas ties some beautiful nymphs there with that 
micro glint um, tails on it. It is fantastic. Look for just a real subtle little little tail. Um, just add that extra little sparkle. So basically, what I'm going to do with this is I am going to just begin to stroke back that hacker till they get all those barbs stand, standing straight out. Just like so, as you can see. All right, get them all standing straight out. You don't need much. Okay. Pinch them back, hold them back. Expose a little bit of the core there. And I'm trying to think. That's a really tight fit. And just attach it in there to the back of the hook. I say this fly is very simple and it's very sparse. So, you know, I feel sometimes with dries, some people, and even myself included at times, tend to get a bit, oh, they tend to overdress them a bit. I think, you know, most of the effective dries I have are, um, hey George, how are you going? <laughs> I look better in George's video, very good. I don't know if any of you have seen the, the video, you're probably all sick of hearing my voice now already on Saturday night, we're only starting the live show, but George, I did an interview there a couple of weeks back with George um, on his YouTube channel. He's doing a great series of interviews there now with Ireland's top river anglers. Um, I was away down the list, of course, but all the top guys were on there before me and coming on after me. But um, really interesting. You know, it's nice to see um, the interviews and getting to know a bit more about the guys you do hear about in competitions and stuff like that. Um, uh, but George has up on his YouTube there. there um, it's uh, well worth a watch. And um, he's got some great videos on there. So, so have a look at that there later on. Uh, Martin O'Rourke, is there any difference in tying up dry um, down a hook or is, it, is, is the eye up better? Uh, I think more traditionally, Martin, uh, up eye hooks where, um, by the way, as I'm talking, what you can see I'm doing here is I'm furling this um, hackle. So I'm basically twisting in my hand. It can be a little bit awkward, so it takes me just a few seconds to do it. So I'm basically twisting until all those barbs are sticking straight out off the, straight out off the stem. But uh, traditionally, dry, up eye dries were tied, I think, because to keep the tippet um, kind of a bit more natural up off the, the, the film of the water as the fly sits in the water. Um, but uh, personally, I haven't tied an up fly dry in, since I would have been taught by Noel Shields at 14, 15 years of age. Um, it's not something I don't see a whole lot anymore. Really, um, the real rationale behind it, I'm not going to bullshit you, but I, I'm not 100% sure, Martin, but um, uh, I, I find it down nice to be just as effective. Just to be as effective. All my dries run down nice. So as you can see here, I'm getting a spin on that hackle now. That's furling. If I was to catch that in the center and let it spin back on itself, um, it would furl up. So, before, But we're not going to we're not gonna allow it to get to that stage. Just be careful when you're doing this. For one, use a really good quality genetic saddle um, that has a really good strong stem. Don't over... Uh, spin it because if you do you will get a break there and um, so it's a little bit of trial and error till, till you get the exact look you want like that and that um, you don't overdo it and basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap that up the hook now I must touch and turns the reason why we spin it is I don't want if I was to leave that as a normal unspun hackle we'd get our usual straight We'll get our usual straight um, hackle going up that body, similar to a Griffiths Nat or any other kind of dry fly hackle. What I want is I want them kind of coming out at all different angles. As you can see, as we build it, gives it a little bit more of a rustic look. So once we get up there, near the eye, which are nice fine Kevlar trap that in. Hi Michael Cadigan. Michael just said he just watched the interview just before he came on. Thanks very much. Um, so you'd be sick of hearing my voice tonight Michael. Um, so once I've got that attached you're going to naturally have some barbs out over the eye. So just a bit of tidying up to be done there for the moment. I say this fly is to be lightly dressed. It's not to be not to be um, picture perfect. That's why we're furling the hackle. This thing floats like crazy. So very good for bringing up fish to the blind. Okay, and that's absolutely perfect. I'm really happy with that look. As you can see, it's there now. It's got a, a lovely rustic look to it. Um, going to add a little wing on the top of it. 
two small natural CDC feathers. We're going to go in there and we're going to place them just on top. I just want them coming back as far as the shank of the hook and just place them on top. Two in there and just tidy up the waist. One or two turns in there just at the eye, just to secure the CDC feather in there. And then just before we finish, a little bit of black marker on the Kevlar. <coughs> I like using the Kevlar for my dries. It's very fine, very, um, very strong, and um, it's also non-absorbent, so it doesn't take in water. And on a dry fly, that for me is it's a very crucial component that uh, we're not adding any additional weight through um, materials being absorbent. Little whip finish, tighten up. Just trim off our waist. And uh, now we can trim our tail. So we want our tail just sticking out, just beyond those last couple of hackles. Um, barbs that are sticking out through the back of that little dry. Give it a little brush out. And there you have it. That's a little dry fly. And no matter what water I fished that on over the years, home or abroad, has always been very successful at bringing up trout to the blind, catching fish. Um, Dave O'Donovan's on there, and that's a favourite fly of Eamon Wilson. It is, absolutely, Dave. It's a favourite fly for a lot of people. I think we fished that a good few years ago, Dave and Doro. And I remember one night you were on a brown version. Now, that was the Brutus. This is, this is a, a variation of kind of that that I've kind of been using over the years where the body of the the brood is very similar probably a little bit sparser um the wing over the top is is completely different and it doesn't have a tail but i definitely remember you one night in doro fishing the urkana and the fish that you were getting um so robbie um robbie wants to know what's the best hook to get on to fish down robbie you can fish that on whatever size you want um <clears throat> that's a size 18 i like the 18s and 20s um of course it'll depend on on the, the cape um It'll, it'll depend on the cape. Uh, you know, you want a really fine, here's a pro grade whitening saddle, um, you know, with a really fine, really fine barbs on, on, on those hackles. And um, it's perfect for doing the smaller stuff. That's an ideal cape for doing it. Yeah, if they're gonna cost you a few pounds, but they're definitely um, they're definitely investment. You're gonna have it for a long time. So <clears throat> it's, it's one worth of investing in is getting a really quality saddle. Um, obviously, if you don't have a, you don't have that finer saddle, you can't go down to the finer sizes. Um, but I've fished that up to 14s and it has been quite effective. But for definitely, um, definitely for the most success, 18s and 20s. You know, you're fishing midges. It's it's the reps in midges, gnats. You know, all that kind of stuff. So um, you catch a Pat Kennedy wants to know what time of year. Once trout start rising, Pat. That's pretty much, you know, I've got, I'm not a big dry fly man, <clears throat> while I do a lot of practice on it, but as regards my collection of dries will be um, sparse enough. You know, I'd have a dozen or 10 at the best of really go-to dries. We'll cover them all over this winter tying season. I'm going to do one of my dries every night because over the next couple of weeks and, and same with all the nymph patterns and some of the lock, lock style stuff and some of the, the stocky stuff, but um, we'll definitely get to cover all the dries. Um and that's one there that you know would have <clears throat> never really changed much about it color wise as regards the the um, grizzle hackle or anything like that just keep it natural and gray um but definitely once truck rising I, I have no problem putting that putting that over a rising fish and, and be confident enough that it's going to he's going to come up and have a look at it anyway whether i can hook him and land him is another thing but he's certainly certainly going to get his, in his interest floats really well and uh, has that real real rustic look that i liked about about my flies um good fishy good fishy fly and uh, <clears throat> very simple but say don't overdress it keep it sparse and um, that thing's going to be one definitely i'm going to hear, hear somebody is coming back to me next year saying that that dry got catches a lot of fish so one well worth uh <clears throat> well worth having in the box so gonna have it and have a beer tonight well we're we're chatting here online hope everyone's keeping well that's on there now at the moment 
and uh, you're all enjoying your bank holiday weekend for what it is. We've got some bad weather coming in over the next couple of weeks, just to cheer us all up a bit. It's just been good news after good news last couple of last couple of days. So um, throw in a bit a bit of a storm, a bit of a hurricane there, just to, just to make us all feel that little bit better. Uh, but anyway, we have tonight. Pour ourselves a cold one, and uh, say so if anyone's got any questions or <clears throat> comments or men they'd like to see. By all means, please do shout them across, even for next week. Um, going to just quickly before I move on, going to announce the winner. I did a draw. We did a draw starting Tuesday for some zonkers and some of our dubbing. There's five or six zonkers in there, packets of our zonkers. There is some of our different rabbit, natural rabbit fur dubbins and stuff in there. And I uh, did a draw just before it came online. And Cameron Craig's. Cameron. I'm going to get that off the post to you Tuesday morning. Monday's a bank holiday, so I won't get it off. Um, but going to get that off to you Tuesday morning, Cameron. I will be in touch with you straight after the show to let you know you won if you're not watching. And uh, get your details off to you. And congratulations. Thanks for everyone for taking part. And um, <clears throat> look forward to next week. Going to have another competition uh, starting Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. Um, so make sure check keep an eye on our Facebook page. And uh, we're going to keep the competitions coming, keep the live fly time and the videos coming to try and everyone to get through this this um, tough time together. Um, also, what we did last week, and we'll do the same this week, is I tied all these flies before I came on, <clears throat> just to make sure I wasn't I wasn't too rusty for you. And that, um, last week, I asked on Sunday morning, I asked a very simple question based on the Saturday night show. Um, who was the winners of the 2020 Thomas Town competition that we spoke about last weekend? And uh, <clears throat> the first person to give me the correct answer won the flies from last week. It'll, it'll be the same this week. So based on tonight's show, something on tonight's show, I'm going to ask a question tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock or so, whenever I get up. And um, first first answer in, first correct answer in wins tonight's flies. The ones we tie in line and the ones I actually tie in crack. So there'll be 10 flies-ish <clears throat> to win tomorrow morning. So be up early and check out our Facebook page early in the morning. Um, okay, let's move on to another another pattern um jerry monahan's on there brilliant fly you something very similar thanks jerry yeah it is it's a real real fish catcher um okay we're going to move to a uh, nymph next okay this is one that um not too many some people have heard of not i was talking to alan lawless there earlier on and i mentioned that i was going to tie this nymph tonight and he goes what's that um the polyphytus anyone ever heard of a polyphytus nymph um good few years back the first year Myself, Dave and Robbie entered the uh, Hannock European Grayland Festival. Um, Robbie fished this nymph. I fished it a bit as well. Um, and ever since then, it's been it's been a nymph in our box. Not just for his super grayland fly, but not just for grayland. We've got a lot of trout on it over the years too. Robbie would probably say that it's one of his really go-to patterns. And it is. It's a fantastic pattern. One that I don't see in too many boxes. So the polyphytus nymph, it predates jig hooks. Uh, it would have been a style of nymph that a lot of top competition guys would have used prior to jig hooks to get that effect of the bead sitting on the bed of the river and the hook sitting up in, in, in the water in order to prevent a lot of, you know, excessive sn snagging and stuff like that on dirty beds of river. Um, hey, Alan, Kenny, Alan's on there. I hope you're all keeping in Castle Comer. Um, Jonathan Barnes in the UK, it's his pattern. Michael, is that the polyphytus nymph you're talking about? Um, if it is, it'd be great to know. Um, Graham Lonnie goes on to say, Eamon, Eamon, Eamon Wilson was on, he showed him how to tie flies. Eamon showed me back when I was about 16 as well. I had a, an evening with Eamon in, in the home in, in um, Dave Toohey was on there as well, saying it's an Italian nymph. Uh, but Eamon, Con Eamon Wilson was on in my house and he, he showed me a few tricks and tips when I was young, that too, Graham. Uh, great fly player, uh, fantastic fisherman, and um. Yeah, very, very, very talented person. So the polyphytus nymph, and a really good nymph. Um, Dave Tooley has just said that it's an Italian nymph, and we are going to tie it now. Um, so first thing we're going to do is put a size 12 302 into the vice. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so um, Michael Cadigan just put up the name of the person that invented this fly. I actually had a little bit of a look online. I don't know where, but you can you can find quite a lot of videos on it and stuff. It's it's a common enough. There is some stuff and information. I didn't have an over big research on it, but um, yeah, it's it's an import having the box. It, it certainly is. There's no question about it. it catches fish. Uh, Robbie, I think this was the the nymph that caught you your very first grayling, was it? 
um, on the Welsh Day in the Hannock Festival. Uh, that competition has been very good to us over the years. We've uh, had quite a bit of success there. We have two golds and a silver. Um, in a Greyland Championships for Irish team, that's, that's we're, we're, we're very, very happy, very lucky as well. We got great draws, you know, good teamwork, all that kind of stuff, all adds in, uh, which is a big thing. Um, <coughs> but uh, great to have a little bit of success over there in a competition that stature. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to attach our beads. I'm just trying to get something out of the cover. So we're going to attach our bead to the hook in a little bit of anyone that doesn't notice this way in a bit of unconventional kind of uh, method we're going to take so the, the traditional pattern has a pin one of those um dress dressers pin you get in the collar of a shirt something you buy a shirt sometimes or whatever but a real fine pin you bend the pin and tie it up when i'm doing it i use a monofilament a heavy monofilament and basically what i'm going to what i do with that in order to make the bead stay on it is I melt one end and then against a hard cold surface I push down on it before it sets creating a little knuckle okay and that's going to stop the bee from slipping over slipping over the edge of that um, monofilament when I, when I push it through the bead so take your bead and through the larger tapered section slide through your monofilament like so okay 46 cm Rick, Robbie's on there how you doing Robbie um so Robbie was also on there saying that it's uh it's an old style pattern as Peter said used prior to jigs yeah so it is it was the pre pre jig era and of course jig hooks came out then probably after a few world championships were won on him we got him um the rest of the world did uh, Robbie had a 46 46 cm grail and a um, fantastic fish to get in any any river. Um, but anyway, so once I've got that connected, that's ready to go. We're going to tie on some Kevlar. And we're not going to mount this right up at the eye hook. We're going to hold back a couple of mil um, to allow for a bit of space there to do a bit of work once we get the whole thing tied in. Okay, so don't worry about the bead slipping a little bit on that monofilament now for the moment. Uh, you see what I'm going to do to it afterwards. So basically, keep the bead just up there around the eye. Secure it in, but don't secure it up the way completely up to the eye. Leave a little bit there so I can manipulate that a little bit and get it up. Get it up enough later on to um, do another bit of work on it. Come down there a couple of mil on that. Get your scissors in there and cut that mono back with a little bit of an angle on it, okay? Just get it back into position. Exactly where I want it. Bring down your tying thread and secure it in well. And again, we're back on the Kevlar. So once that's well secured in, sitting up on top, got a nice taper down, we're ready to go. Uh, so Francisco Palu is the guy credi credited with the poly fight, poly this nymph, I always, um, poly fight this nymph. Um, so he's an Italian guy, that's courtesy of Dave Tui, my man Dave. It's always nice to get an old bit of history about flies and stuff like that, I love that kind of stuff. Um, so always good to have that information now i'm just thinking what's next so next is a bit of a tail so this kind of represents a kind of a caddis a bit of a caddis pattern so i got some dyed partridge here and i'm going to tie that in as a bit of a tail now you can put in a hot tag there if you want as well you can put in natural partridge i think pretty much the tying of this the, it, it kind of suits your uh suits the river the fish you're fishing for Whatever else. This is going to have a little grayling twist on it. Um, hi, Fionn. So, Alan Kenny's on there and his son Fiona's watching. Hope you're keeping well, young man. And uh, your dad's teaching out to tie plenty of flies, stocking up them boxes for the for the spring to get back out on the Dean and Dining River. 
um, and hope you enjoy the show. If you have any questions at all, Fionn, shout them across there and I'll be more than happy to, to answer any questions you may have. Um, okay, so once we've got our bit of a, a tail tied in there, we're then going to tie in a bit of a rib. Again, going back to my sulky. Sulky copper. Use a lot of this stuff. Uh, Saboya also have a flat... If you can't get your hands on that, go onto our website. Saboya have a range of flat wires out at the moment and they're very similar to that. Um... In, in thickness and stuff like that so it'll certainly get you out of a hole if you don't have the sulky stuff but um, I use that quite a bit it's, it's very good um, Dave wants to know if Fiona is going to be a champion fisherman well Dave if his dad has anything to do it I'm sure he will he's been certainly taught it'll see lots of posts there of Fiona and his brother out the river fishing all summer long on the Dean and Dining so um, we'll keep an eye out for him in the future um, bit of UV fox squirrel for the body. You can use hair's ear as well, um, whichever, whichever you want. I like this kind of more dark caddisy kind of pattern. Just take your time building up that, building up that body. Take it up along there till you get up just where your tread stops before it uh, heads off up to the weed, where that monofilament heads off up to the weed. Leave a bit of space there for yourself to do a bit of work. Okay, we're going to take a rib. And we're going to rib that up. I said last week what I like about the flat ribs is that they don't cut through the dubbing quite as easy as a wire rib. Uh, it tends to sit on top of that dubbing a little bit more and allows it a little bit of extra exposure for that dubbing. Just get up around there to the eye where you brought the tread. Secure it in underneath on the blank hook. And take it away. Now, as usual, we always like to do it in the hairs, patterns and the fur patterns. Give it a little brush out just to get an extra spike or two a nice natural look on that caddis perfect I like the look of that one now we're going to put a hackle in there this is one of the traits of this style of fly I'm going to put in a little bit of partridge I think and myself and Robbie were fishing this a few times or we tied it a few times we put in some CDC and partridge so you want a nice soft hackle wing soft hackle Soft hackle on this, um, not wing, sorry. Soft hackle on this fly. Um, I don't think a cocker, maybe you might get away with a hen, but partridge is ideal for this um, for this pattern. If I'm not mistaken, the original was partridge as well. So just strip back a little bit of partridge. Natural grey. And I'm looking for my hackle fly, which it is. Uh, Dave Furlong wants to know if this pack, pack, pattern can be tied effectively on um, a jig hook. Yes, absolutely, Dave. This was pre-jig hook. So this was the flies. This is the, the way guys were tying uh, flies that would fish upside down in the water um, prior to the invention of jig hooks. You can absolutely fish this pattern on a jig hook, but you, you won't have the bead mounted in this manner. Um, it'll be just mounted in the normal manner on a jig hook, and you lose a slot of bead rather than... Uh, rather than um, <coughs> a countersunk bead mounted on a piece of monofilament or wire. So just tie that in there like so. And then uh, those tips of, so you can see I tied in the tip of the, um, folded back the, the, the hackles on the um, partridge tied in the tip. Now this can be brittle enough, so just be careful for the first turn or two, just to get around your stem, that monofilament stem that you have going up to the bead. Couple of turns in around it, and then go back onto the, trap it in onto the blank hook underneath. Bit of a 
the squeeze, tighten her up, make sure it's all well secured in. Now I say, I can remember myself and Robbie, and we were tying this, and we used a, um, a CDC feather in there also to give the extra bit of movement and softness to that hackle, and by all means, if you want to add that in, do. Um, I'm going to take another little pinch of our fox school dubbing. Michael McLean is on there saying it's a lovely looking fly. It is, Michael. It's a very lovely looking fly. Uh, very natural. Sits. You know what? While, while the jig hooks do. Um, while the jig hooks do create that look that this initially. That this one initially kind of created. Um, so basically all I was doing there was just holding back the bead a bit. Exposing that little bit of a blank hook in there. And just putting a small pinch of dubbing in there that will just. Finish off the underside of that fly and leave everything ready to go. Um, the it, it does. It's I think it's a little bit more distinctive in the way this one swims. Firstly, because of the way you have the hackle. The way you have the hackle there on the on that stalk, like almost like a clean camera style. Um, but as you see now in a second when I hold it on my hand, it immediately sits up in the water. Um, so there we go. You can see the hackle on it now. Very natural looking fly. Very buggy looking. Um, one definitely worth having a bit of experimentation with. Probably a fly that's not fished often enough, but can be absolutely lethal. John Stewart is on there and said it's a top tweed grayling pattern, that one. Great to hear, John. Um, I know I've used it a lot on the Welsh Dee and uh, even in Slovenia and a few other places that I fish for grayling. And um, it's definitely one of our go-to patterns as well. We want more little thing to add to this fly. Um, the light I put on it for a grayling twist. Um, and basically it's a bit of pink fluorescent UV varnish. Okay. <clears throat> Gonna add in um I like to seal the top of that bead just up there. Um and you can seal it with you know super glue if you want you can seal it with um you can seal it with a coloured resin, just normal plain resin, uh, whatever you want to seal it with for the grayling doesn't make much of a difference i don't know it makes much of, um <laughs> thanks neil neil says make it look easy um it's uh it is look at it. any any fly is simple if you break it down step by step just start like some people look at a fly and say jeez and i do often that like some people send me a, a picture of a fly and ask me to copy about how oh, that name of god i'm going to tie that fly thing. but if you break it down step by step it's they're not complicated uh, just do take one step at a time something goes wrong go back a step um so basically got a little bit of resin here on my needle and i'm just going to put a little bit of resin into that little crater it's kind of a little target spot see it it's going to give that little blast of the uv pen just to set it you can see there's a nice bang off that resin it's a uh, highly fluorescent set that Gives a little target point for those winter uh Larkin. Larkin, sorry. I was actually trying my best to think of your name and um I'm terrible with names. Everyone that knows me that Larkin knows that I'm the worst in the world about names, but uh yep. Yeah. How you doing Larkin over there in Castle Homer? Hope you and your brother are getting ready for uh next season's trout fishing. So there we go, you can see that little pink hot spot on the top of that bead, just really finishes off that pattern seals all that up and um that thing is a serious fish catcher in this day um definitely one that shouldn't be forgotten pre-jig era but uh that's where it all began for the jig hooks and, and slot beads and stuff like that and as you can see once i put it into my hand and get it up there now it sits straight up i'm kind of walking backwards here with the hand um i should move the voice there for a second actually out of the way i'm going to be you can see how that sits up very distinctive in the way it sits in my hand you know give it a little bit of a wobble look at it still sitting up okay you can do that with a jig hook i don't know if you use a four mil jig and stuff like that it will it will sit up but to me that's far superior that will fish the river like that say avoid excessive snagging especially if you got a dirty bed of a river for grayling the first thing they're going to pick up is that hook you can set that hook um, definitely one for the box. 
really good trout fly too. Mix around with your variations of colors and stuff. As you can see, I'm moving my hand and it's still sitting up there. Okay, so really, that's 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 um, that's a fantastic nymph. Put your little hot spot up there as well. Can be can be very effective, and um, yeah, beautiful looking nymph. Really my style to tie in. Nice and rustic, um, and absolutely fantastic. Fantastic fly. Well, well worth having in the box. Play around with it for next season. I want to hear lots of good things about the polyphylus nymph uh, next year from a lot of guys. Um, I know we've had great success on that, and particularly Robbie, one of our team members from the Iron Blues. Irish Iron Blues and over in the Grayland Festival in the Welsh Day, we've had a lot of success on, on that style of nymph over the years. So um hope he's <coughs> hope he's all enjoyed that one. Um so <coughs> moving on from there. I'll just really set this voice back up. Um what we're going to do next. What I did last week actually was um I did a um buzzer pattern. Now Oliver Farr came on last week and sent me a very good piece of information on the static buzzer. Um, meant to have it printed off that he was a bit of a lowdown on that buzzer, but we got the name of it. Thanks to everyone that sent it. Um, but a few other people were on asking about different worms and and different um, apps and different things like that. And so I said, look, and I'm going to cover one one tonight. An apps. Um, this one is probably one of the better ones at the moment. There's lots of variations out there. There's glass beads apps. There's oh, there's flexi flocks, flexi flexi the flexi floss, uh, different colors, different shapes, different sizes, different bead colors in the middle, different bodies. It's you can try boxes, boxes of, of worms, um, and and still someone else could turn up and have the worm that that catches all the fish. You mightn't have it in it, but this one is is pretty good. Very very simple pattern, and it is the perfect rubber. Perfect Rubber is a product of the market. Uh, we have it in the shop. We get it from Hairline in the US. Um, and this is a really effective one. I've used this one down in Adair Springs on my last couple of visits and had quite a lot of success on it. Um, and this is Perfect Rubber here. Okay, so it's a similar material to Flexi Floss. It's a bit tangled up there now. Similar material to Flexi Floss, but far more limp. Far more, a lot more movement in it. And there's a slight speckle in it. Okay, it's round. It's a rubber material, basically. Um, and has a serious amount of movement in the, in, in the water. Um, well worth getting yourself if you're into your your um, bank fishing. Well worth getting yourself a couple of hanks. This comes in quite a number of colours and uh, very 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 good stuff. Um, the tie them the way I tie them, the ones the ones that work for me are very very simple. Okay, you can do them glass beads and all that kind of stuff. But again, we've we've all the glass beads you want and stuff on on the website there. But um, and they they do work. But this was the one that. Stood out from the crowd a bit over the last couple of weeks down in um, Ned Mars, down in Adair Springs there. When I was practicing for the AWOL, the AWOL Winter League. Fingers crossed that's going ahead this year. I think Alan, Alan Aulis, our, our main man there. Alan does a great job every year on the AWOL League, organizes it for us, puts up with all our crap and our giving out and our whinging when we don't catch fish, especially me anyway. Um, that's um, going ahead. So hopefully after lockdown five in December at some stage, we might get... Uh, we might get um, we might get to fish a couple of legs at the winter league. Great competition, great bit of crack, great group of lads. Look forward to it every winter. Helps us pass the winter and stuff like that. So fingers crossed we'll get that. Uh, gonna tie this on a size twelve WSL, the Haku Barbus hook, and I'm gonna put a. You can put a three or three point five mil B there. All depends on the depth you want to achieve. Uh, gold for I'm gonna tie an olive one. Um, no problem a few guys on there Simon, Dan Robbie on there saying a lovely looking fly yeah it is well worth a go and it, it's nice to tie something different you know um, I don't know about anybody else but certainly I get sick of tying the same stuff all the time I tie a lot of nymphs and they're all jig 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 and um, you know it's nice now and again to sit down and tie something just a little different um, so definitely um <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Dave was on there. Alan Lawless. Alan Lawless got uh, had a great result on the Sunday in uh, A2 in the Thomastown competition. Um, he surely did. Uh, I think they got 20. Himself and Stephen Potts got 26 fish in the final session. Mightn't have sounded a lot in the overall general terms of how that competition went and the results that come in, but let me tell you, that was a fantastic, fantastic session um, to get 26 off A2. A2 fished uh, very difficult. On, on the day, on the weekend, the whole weekend, and uh, Alan and Potsy went in there 
and uh, got 26 for show, but well done, well done, Alan. So, um, how are you doing, Sean Kavanagh? Sean Kavanagh, Sean Kavanagh was our winner last week. He won all the flies last week. Hope you got him, Sean, and you like him. Uh, hey, Graham, hope you're keeping well. Um, his son Adrian is two today, and he got his first fly rod. Good man, well done. Um, hope he's many years of of uh, catching with the fly rod. Um, so anyway, back to this. Um, no problem, Alan Kenny. Thanks very much for watching. I uh, hope the boys enjoyed it. So going to use an olive tying thread for this one. Um, just got it. Say three mil or three point five mil bead on a size twelve WSL hook. I like the WSL, uh, the Hacko barbless hooks for all my stocky stuff, uh, streamers, lures, anything like that at all. I think the, the hook up on them is exceptional and um, good stuff, Sean. You got them, great. Glad you got them. Uh, again, don't forget everyone that's watching tomorrow morning. I'm going to ask a question on tonight's show, some random question, and um, that I would have mentioned tonight. First person in with the answer. Wins all these flies that I'm trying tonight, but also all the practice flies that I did. So I did a few flies before I came online, just to sharpen up and uh, make sure I'd ever covered and all the materials ready for you. Um, so all those flies, 8 to 10, will be in a little tube and will be sent to somebody on Tuesday morning. Um, so make sure you check it out in the morning and um, have a, a chance of winning some flies. Uh, so basically what I've done is just tied in, tied in my tying thread, and I'm going to tie in my Flexi Floss Worms, okay, or strands. So i got two long ones here. Uh, make them quite long. You can trim them off afterwards. Um, and everyone has their preferred kind of length. I do like kind of long legs sticking out of the back of the fly. So you're going to tie kind of one third or so out of the back of the fly. So get the two of them together. Place them on top of the hook. Get a couple of turns in there to secure them in. And then bring your thread back up to the head of it. And you can see that olive. There's a lovely little speckle there. In that in that olive um this is perfect rubber you'll find on our website then basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap the body with our other oh it does slip out of hand like so i say this is live for anyone that's going to be watching us this will be um i will upload this video onto youtube tomorrow for anyone that missed tonight or that doesn't that's not on facebook uh just remember uh, just a few people had um, came on and commented on a few things last Sunday. Um, this is a live Saturday night show. We're going to be keeping it going, guys, for the for the winter. We've got uh, great plans for a big Christmas special for everyone. So make sure and stay tuned. Um, the details that'll come out. Uh, I won't put it out too early for you. I'll, I'll leave it till first week in December. So, but some night over the Christmas, we're going to put on a Christmas special. Uh, Pascari Fly Christmas Fly Time Special. It's going to be a couple of hours longer. Bit of fun. We're going to have some guest fly tires. Uh, lots of giveaways try and pass the winter i think it's i'm hoping it's not going to be a really long christmas in lockdown but look at at this stage it's still 2020 we can't predict anything and uh, i think we just got to prepare for the worst so um gonna have a, a bit of a christmas special to try and try and pass one of the nights over the christmas and um hopefully hopefully it'll be a bit of fun and you'll all enjoy join in and uh, we'll have a bit of fun together so all i did basically was wound it up the body trapped it in at the back of the bead a turn or two in at the back of the bead going to whip finish just in behind the beads i'm going to hold those back with one hand whip finish with the other so james that was uh james gibson just wants no beads look at three mil 3.5 it's on a size 12 i like the size 12 for these kind of flies it's on a size 12 so three mil or 3.5 uh depending on the depth i want to reach depending if i'm fishing under a bung or if i'm free lining it uh, i know in a dare um adair springs there over the last couple of weeks free lining on, on a very long leader um was bringing a lot of success for a couple of guys um and one and, w and well worth trying so it depends on fishing under bone or long lining depends on the depth they want to be depends on the time of year but generally around a three or 3.5 mil I, for this particular color which is olive um the olive uh, perfect rubber i just like a simple gold bead you can you know do the brown the red the pink whatever and um you can get a you know put different color beads on there as well and mix it up trial and error is always the way for me with bank fishing anyway and there you have it very simple um perfect rubber fly another another fantastic worm pattern to have for your bank fishing uh really really simple um 
really, really Deirdre, Deirdre Laney's on there and uh, she's yeah, she's saying as well she's a lot of success in Neds with these great to see how they're tied so simple enough yeah they're really simple you know when it comes to tying worms be it squirmies be it um, you know perfect rubber flexi floss whatever it may be oh, I find simple is the best they're not going to last that long anyway so keep them simple don't overdress them um, that, that particular tying right there now is probably one of my best worms um, just simple body, no dubbins. I don't bother with the dubbins on these kind of things and stuff like that. Nice long legs. You can see the length of those legs. Good long legs. Lots of movement in that. That thing's going to be flickering around an awful lot. And um, if there's a, a bow in sight, he'll certainly open his his mouth to have a taste of that guy or just pluck at it. Um, so definitely try them out. Uh, tie up a whole selection of colours. Um, and you're, you're going to get a bit of winter success over that once we're allowed back onto the ponds. Um that's that one bit of a request there from last week. Well worth having him. So Graham Lanigan was on there. Thank you for all these sessions. Life can be tough for some at the moment. And these sessions really help. Thanks a million. Thanks a million, Graham. You know what? These sessions aren't just for... I don't do these just, just for our customers or to, to promote things. They're also for, you know, people that just had, had enough. <laughs> I'm one of those people too. Uh, I do look forward to sitting here tying... Even though I don't have the direct conversation with people, but I know I'm, I'm watching people's comments, seeing people's likes, seeing the amount of people that come on and watch, and then you know the comments I get for the next couple of days afterwards and questions. Um, you know I really, you know it, it is tough on a lot of people at the moment. I'm lucky; I don't have it as tough as some. Some people have it very, very tough at the moment, uh, especially coming to this time of year with Christmas and all coming. And I suppose a message I would like to send out here is, you know, for everybody, I know it's a real, you know, saying at the moment is shop Irish, shop local. Be it your local butchers, you know, not even just about your local fish and tackle stores. Of course, support your local fish and tackle stores. I always promote that. Um, be it anyone, you know, Clan and Ave, Pat Nolan, myself, um, Sean Carty, any of them. You know, it, it, it's a tough game to be in, but um, especially with so much international competition. But you know, your local craft stores, your local butchers, everyone's suffering at the moment. So if you are shopping to Christmas, please support local, um, and it'll it'll help your community if nothing else. Um, so anyway, back to our flight thing. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Really appreciate the support as well. Um, so now we're going to move on to that. That um, I was asked about tying in some wolf wings during the week. Uh, his name slips me now, actually. Who asked? But we got a message in about wolf wings, and I put a picture up earlier on of a particular wolf, mayfly wolf that was catching an awful lot of fish for um, some guys up in Sheila and, and over in the west this year. <coughs> And I'm um, going to do this one for you. It's a bit of tying in it. So um, bear with me for a second there now while I set, set it up a bit. Just get rid of it. 